Anyways, Andrea Trincheri told that My respect for Olympiacos is huge. It means that they are really good. If you ask me to give a team that will win it, the EuroLeague, I believe in karma. What happened hmm. last year was very painful for them, but they are the names I am going to put for the trophy at this moment. Reactions, please. What do you think about this statement? I think that he had to choose something outside of Real Madrid and he chose... First of all, really he didn't need team. to choose anything. You know, he came up yeah. with this, you know, there were no questions, nothing. He was just talking about, you know, in pre-game, Jargues Olympiacos. Uh, look, before the game, you usually try to praise your opponent and see what happens. Maybe they get, uh, maybe they feel really good about themselves. Maybe this happened. There is a really slight chance of this happening and it did not happen as we saw on Friday. And but there is no surprise to me that Trinkeri chose Olympiacos. I mean, they were in the final last year. They are pretty good this year in a very competitive Euroleague. They are just two or three wins away from the second place. And knowing uh, all the injuries they had, knowing so many new players coming in, I think they're in a good position. These, these, these last seven games will be really important. But looking at the advanced stats, they have uh, they have been the best team if we are taking into consideration only the games uh, since the new year, since round 18, when the team started playing the second game with everyone. So in this 10 game um, period, they have the number third offense, number six defense, and the number one net rating in total. So I think they're gearing up at the right time. Uh, you know, everybody knows how they're going to play, but it still works. Uh, I think the addition of Moses Wright is actually really interesting and might give them defensive versatility in the playoffs. But the only que question to me remains the same. Thomas Walkup had a fantastic game. Shaq McKissick had a fantastic mm. game. But the defense that Jalgir showed on Friday, you are not going to see in the playoffs or even against the, the really good teams. Like Jalgir was pretty poor in that department on Friday. And uh, teams are going to risk because they have a, such a great off offensive style, teams have to risk something and it's going to be Thomas Walkup freeze, it's going to be Papa Nicolau freeze, it's going to be McKissick freeze in the playoffs. And can they be efficient in the last five minutes of the games? That's my question for them. That has been there since the start of last season and even before, and it really hasn't changed. And we saw last year that they had to go five games even though they were the number one seed in the, mm. uh, you know, to, to, to start the playoffs. So, um, I, I love how they their their playing style, but still that question remains to me to this day. Yeah, I watched your breakdown uh, that you released on Saturday, and like some of the comments were saying, it's kind of dizzy sometimes to watch these these off ball movements because it, it's just always going on. And I I feel like you said the right thing here. Now in the regular season to have this like default, the base of this Barsaka system that's always a, a off ball movement, offense, you know, off, like all the things you talked about, back screens, cuts and, and, and stuff like that uh, is great. But then, like you said, when it comes to playoffs, I feel like it'll, it'll become difficult when a team can prepare for your specific style of play and just for your specific uh, style of play and then uh, break those plays. And then when the plays are broken, what's going to happen? Like, who's going to be the guy to to make some offense happen? Last year, they had Slukas and Vazenkov. I feel like those guys were able to... Well, I remember Vazenkov's uh, game winner. I remember Slukas' game winners and, and stuff like that. So I feel like this year, I just don't see the guy to, to take initiative uh, when it comes to these clutch plays. And that's their biggest problem, I, I feel like. And I, I, I don't know, it, it's a bold thing to say, but I feel like the playoffs could be where they basically get stopped with this. Uh, mm. Last year, they were number one, uh, like you said, in the standings. This year, they're sixth. I mean, th th that system lets them be there, but I feel like, like what I just said before, I'm not going to repeat myself. I feel like th they might be stopped by some more prepped team in the playoffs i think it really depends on if they do get a home court advantage like it, it's really important for them in the playoffs uh, yeah everybody's talking how it's not important only if you have game five but home court advantage is basically that you have the home you have the last game at home so and uh, olympiacos had consecutive game five series yeah, in the last two seasons so it's monaco too so i think it's really important though these last seven games for for olympiacos 
to get the home court advantage. And we are going to talk about it a little bit later since uh, one of my uh, teams that I prepared is basically the race for the second mm -hmm. place and the race for the home court advantage in the playoffs. I actually tried to check what bookmakers think about uh, the favorites to win the EuroLeague. And of course, except from Real Madrid, there's a huge gap between Real Madrid and others. And the first few teams that are coming after Real Madrid is Barcelona, Monaco and Panathinaikos. Olympiacos is just slightly below these teams. There's Fenerbahce again a little bit below. And then there's a huge gap until Virtus, Maccabi and Partizan comes. So I, I kind of agree with that idea that Monaco, Panathinaikos, Olympiakos, Barca, and even Fenerbahce, I think that after Sharas mm. uh, take over, they got better and they will be better uh, with some time. So it's, it's going to be a hell of a season because some of these teams that I mentioned, in a, being in a race for the title, some of them, they are still in the playing uh, mm. pool. So it's You know, it's you know tough. What, what I was thinking, I feel like if they finish in the second half of the... So if they don't have the advantage, like uh, what Augusta said, if they finish fifth to eighth, uh, like let's say they, they end up in the play and but still qualify, I feel like then I don't see them going to the final four. But if they are there, like, because they can be fourth easily, like uh, it's only one win away. If they are and in they that... Can be eighth yeah. or seventh pretty easily so yeah it's, that's true as well but point being i feel like if they make it through the playoffs uh i feel like in the final four their chances are better than in the playoffs as weird as it seems but in one game i favor having this system and having to rely on on the yeah. whole team rather than you know if what if one player what your one star player mike james has a bad game I mean, and if your whole offense is dependent on how he plays, mm. it's a bit more risky in a single game elimination. So I feel like in the in the final four, I see them I see them winning uh, uh, the EuroLeague championship more than actually ah. getting to final four. Yeah, you see what I mean. Mm. It makes sense.